More than 300 Russian occupiers have surrendered voluntarily into Ukrainian captivity. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine reports an increase in the number of requests to the I Want to Live project from Russian occupiers who want to surrender. As representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Andrei Yusov said during the telethon, the fact that there have been more such cases recently is due in particular to the intensification of the enemy offensive. In addition, many soldiers of the enemy army voluntarily ask in advance to be taken into Ukrainian captivity. The number of appeals to the state project I Want to Live from Russian invaders has really increased, and the number of people wishing to surrender has increased. Within the framework of this project alone, more than 300 Russian occupiers have surrendered into Ukrainian captivity, Yusov said. He also said that some of them immediately expressed a desire not to be exchanged or even to join the security defense forces. The I Want to Live project was launched in September 2022. Its goal is to help willing Russian servicemen safely surrender to Ukrainian captivity and save their lives. In case of surrender, the project guarantees detention in accordance with the Geneva Conventions. In addition, such Russians are also guaranteed that they will not be exchanged or returned to the Russian Federation if they wish. If a Russian registers with I Want to Live in advance, the Ukrainian side registers him as having been captured in combat, meaning that he receives payments and status in Russia. In late April 2024, a third camp for holding Russian prisoners of war, Center 3, had been opened in Ukraine. The new camp was opened due to the large number of Russians who surrendered. In Center 3, Russian army personnel have facilities for work, sports and leisure activities. The center also includes designated areas for cooking, resting and interacting with psychologists. Ukraine regularly grants access to its main prisoner of war camp to the Red Cross, the UN and international journalists. Taiwan learning from Ukraine to prepare for attack of China, Ireland's vice president. Taipei is studying the tactics being employed by the Ukrainian military against Russia in its preparations for a potential attack. The island's new vice president, Cao Bikim, has said. Her comments come as Taiwanese president Lai ching tae has been voicing concerns that Beijing, which sees Taiwan as an inalienable part of its territory, has allegedly outlined the island's annexation and the elimination of the Republic of China as the great rejuvenating cause of its people suggesting that the mainland would stop at nothing to take control of the island. Speaking at an event hosted by Chatham House, a British think tank in London, Bikim insisted that Taiwan must reform and decentralize its military command structure, adding that the government is actively learning from Ukraine's defense, where smaller combat forces have proven nimble and adaptable. The vice president, who was elected last month, further claimed that authoritarian regimes were seeking to influence and destabilize other nations through hybrid operations such as political warfare, cyber intrusion, economic coercion and the threat of military force. In light of this supposed threat, Bikim stated that the Taiwanese government has already taken a number of steps to boost its ability to react in the event of an attack. These include the doubling of the island's defense budget, extending mandatory military service from four months to a year, the prioritization of new arms acquisitions and other measures, some of which have been inspired by Ukraine, she said. At the same time, despite the geopolitical tensions, the vice president also suggested the possibility of enabling commercial partnerships with the mainland, stating that Taipei has an interest in working with people across the Taiwan Strait in forging a stable environment in which people can pursue prosperity. Meanwhile, Beijing has denounced Taiwan's new government, branding its new president a dangerous separatist and launching military exercises around the island following Lai's inauguration last month. The Chinese government has continued to insist that it remains committed to peaceful reunification, but has warned that such a prospect is increasingly being eroded by separatists for Taiwan's independence and foreign forces, according to Chinese Defense Minister Dong Jun. Beach buggies, ATVs and electric bikes used by Ukrainian army pose serious problem for Russians. The Wall Street Journal has written that Ukraine is using beach buggies, ATVs and electric bicycles at the front because these vehicles are quieter and harder to see and hear. 
This gives soldiers on the front line a better chance of avoiding Russian drones and surviving. The publication notes that the proliferation of reconnaissance and attack drones means that any movement near the front line can be detected in minutes. To avoid this threat, both Ukraine and Russia have been using a variety of small, quiet and maneuverable vehicles to deliver supplies, evacuate the wounded soldiers and sometimes even send troops into battle. The Wall Street Journal noted that these small vehicles were no substitute for traditional military vehicles. They lack the firepower and space to carry large numbers of people or cargo, and their lack of armor leaves everyone on board vulnerable. But these alternative means of transport fill a niche that soldiers on the front line say has become necessary. For the Azov Brigade soldiers fighting in the Kremina forest in Ukraine's east, smaller vehicles are essential for delivering supplies. An infantry commander, who goes by the alias Iraq, said that the men survive only thanks to the small vehicles because nothing else can get there in the forest and along these narrow paths. A frontline medic named Andriy said he was constantly thinking about how to get the wounded defenders as quickly as possible without coming under Russian fire. He considered electric scooters, bicycles and motorbikes, but decided that the maneuverability of the unicycle was superior. It allows you to move over any obstacle, such as sand or mud, he said, adding that it could also accelerate up to 40 miles an hour. Electric bicycles are also occasionally used on the front line because of their discreetness. According to their manufacturers, they have the added advantage of generating less heat for radar and thermal images. Ukraine's defenders also use a range of different ATVs, including models from US manufacturer Polaris, Japan's Yamaha and various Chinese brands. Some of them can reach speeds of over 70 miles per hour. Traveling at high speeds over rough terrain makes them unstable and the lack of armored protection makes drivers and passengers vulnerable to Russian fire.